people. Welcome to the 90th most popular podcast in the universe. This show is listener supported at patreon.com forward slash Cameron underscore Adair. Other means of support can be found at podcast.cameronadair.com. You can support the show for free by subscribing, rating, and reviewing wherever you're listening right now. After three years, we hit the top 100 chart, and I wouldn't continue making the show without the support. You can also leave a voice message for the show through a link in the notes. Here's the show. Central Station, PSAC, I can help you. Hi, I had a kind of unusual question. Uh, a friend of okay. mine was arrested at your station uh, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, he's actually in the process, his dog was adopted by one of the detectives at Central Station. Okay. I was wondering, he, uh, my friend died, and his mom and I were actually just trying to see if the dog was still the pet of one of the detectives. You know which detective? I know the name of the dog because it was in the paper. And the breed uh, of the dog. It was a Dotson, and they named him Lucky. I remember that. Uh, how long ago was that? You said that. Um, it was probably maybe as long as eight years ago. So pretty eight long. Eight years ago? Yeah, pretty um, long. That detective's probably retired already because we, we have all new detectives here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it would be really awesome if you knew of any of the, I guess, officers or detectives that had a Dawson named Lucky. It'd be nice to let know. Me, let me actually ask. Give me a second. Okay. It's actually probably, for the record, I was on hold a minute and 35 Jesus. seconds here. It was probably like a, 10 years ago. Let long time ago. Hello, sir? Hi. Heard, uh, basically, I, I heard, I sort of kind of actually asked around for you, I heard that basically um, dogs are actually doing well. You're kidding me. Yeah. Is it the pet of somebody at the station still, or did they retire? Not anymore, not anymore. Retired already. They live in the Bay Area, or? I don't know. We, we don't know. Yeah, unfortunately. Are you just saying that, or did somebody say that? As, I mean, as far as that's what the officer is actually telling me, because that's the only information I have. Oh, so somebody just said, yeah, I know that officer and that dog, and they're okay? That dog is doing okay, but as far as that officer, we don't have any information um, where or where they're at. Because basically, once you retire, we don't basically tr- ask them for their, their phone numbers or their, their address where they're at, because basically, they just move on. Okay. Did the person who told you, did they like remember it? I mean, he heard a little bit about it, but he doesn't actually remember, like, Clearly. Um, so, I mean, that's the only information I have. Okay. All right. So, somebody somebody sort of remembers it and just knows that, that they still have the, the little dog? Yeah. But as far as where, where about the officer or that uh, inspectors, I, we don't know. Oh, that's okay. I was going to be amazed if anyone even even remembered or had some record of it, but I figured there was a chance. Yeah. I, I, okay. Well. Yeah, thanks. that's only. Yeah, that, I mean, that's only information I have. Yeah. Okay, we're actually doing a thing on my friend's life because he died. Okay. And so it's um kind of like a little documentary. So okay. if anyone wants to get in touch with me and just say, hey, we do have the dog mm-hmm. and he's doing well, that would be really awesome. Mm-hmm. So is it possible to maybe leave a number for whoever whoever told you that? Sure. What's your What's your name? Cameron, C-A-M. Cameron, okay. Uh, last, okay. last name Adair, A-D-A-I-R. A-D-A-I-R, okay. Phone number? It's 415. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Okay, All right, Cameron. Th- th- sorry for the unusual question, but thanks for your help. Sure, sure. No problem. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. This is the Cameron Adair podcast with me, Cameron Adair. This is episode 29. I met Chase in 2007. 
when we were both new to San Francisco and living in the same building on Taylor and Washington. We quickly became very close. He played in several touring bands with label releases. We shared a lot, not the least of which was the apartment we rented together in 2008 on Mission and 19th, where I ended up living and thriving for many years. I'll preface this next part by saying that 2013 through 16 were very difficult. As far as Chase, in the spring of 2015, just before I launched this show, I made a short film about him and his motorcycle. Later that year, I was homeless and launched this show, editing the first season off a generator while living out of a van parked outside of a friend's house on Lincoln Way next to Golden Gate Park. Never mentioned that here before. A few months later, in the spring of 2016, Chase and I went to Mendocino to trim. These weeks in the woods would be the last stretch of time I spent with him. I then luckily made some degree of peace with my mom enough to let me stay at her house while I was trying to move to L.A., That summer, Chase was found in a park in the East Bay, having suffered acute liver failure due to alcohol, moments after contacting me and his sister. I keep his ashes with me and almost involuntarily call his mom every year on that day. Liz is at home in Missouri and I'm in my studio in Echo Park. The short film I made with Chase is linked in the show notes. Here's Liz. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Liz. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. So, uh... We're hooked into a computer here, and it's it's rolling, just so you know. Okay. I, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to follow up. I I thought we had such a good talk yesterday, and, um, I was was thinking about why I do this. (laughs) Like, why, you know, why am I, why would I want to record our conversation or even relive every year this thing that happened, but. I think that I was thinking about it and I think a lot of the reason that I do this show is because uh, when a lot of you know bad things were happening in my life where I was, like I told you yesterday, the forced rehab thing and then my father's suicide attempt and being homeless. And I thought a lot of it was just really being perpetuated by just a lack of communication. So... It kind of subconsciously was one of the reasons why why I do this. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just want to say thanks. And uh, I thought the story you told about Chase on the beach was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope the recording's not making you uncomfortable. I don't know. I, I was just listening to you. I was thinking in the car earlier, I was like, well, why, why do I do this? That stuff was, was really traumatic. I, you know, Chase was one of the first, back in 2007 or 8, one of the first people that I met when I moved to San Francisco and I think vice versa. And, you know, we lived together and we had some, just a lot of experiences that were formative in retrospect. Sure. I have always said this, that if it wasn't for you, I would never have known Chase was in jail. I wouldn't know that he was squatting in a building. I wouldn't have known any of those things. And, you know, you really didn't owe me anything. You didn't know who I was. And the fact that you felt like you had to reach out and and say something was, it was everything. Because I had no idea what was going on with him during that time period. And then when I 
did find out where he was and got hold of everybody, he was in a hold. So I couldn't talk to him or get hold of him anyway. Literally under the building where we had, had been living. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that was just, I guess that was kind of like the beginning. But Chase wanted to stay out in San Francisco. He just felt like that's the place he needed to be. And so then here it was again <laughs> that you guys caught up and and your friendship was rekindled. And he had a lot of respect for you and liked you a lot and thought a lot of you. And apparently your mother as well. And I'm just so grateful that he found someone like you and that you guys helped each other. Plus being fellow musicians and yeah. Yeah. Without knowing it, there was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get you know make these sweeping statements, but I. Yeah. Yeah, we were really close, um, and it, we had a, a weird relationship because we we got along really well, and we would be really close for stints of time, and then not for. Yeah. For an, another stint of time. And, uh, but I can remember him saying things to me like, Hey, remember Cameron, mom? And I'm like, No, I don't really remember Cameron. And he goes, <laughs> Yeah. When I tell you who he is, you're going to remember him. And then I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. How could I ever forget? Yes, Cameron. And then he'd be like, Well, I caught up with him again. We just kind of ran into each other. I'm like, Really? He's like, Yeah. He's a good guy. And I think you helped him get a job or maybe many jobs. I don't know. Yeah. There was, there's so many stories from that time, but I remember when he, when we were living in Knob Hill yeah. and he had that little puppy, I ended up, I mean, one of the things where he, he had that little puppy and it, uh, the detective ended up with it or something. Yeah, and then the, the San Francisco police detective ended up with it and they, they put it in the paper. What? But yeah, it was in the it was in the uh the paper. That um you know, d detective saves some some puppy or something. Really? From, yeah. It was some kind of posting online. Um, I yeah, I drove that little I remember that night it was just really traumatic, but that puppy wouldn't stop barking, and I had to drive him down to the to the station in Chinatown. Wow, crazy! There are some crazy stories during that time, and you know, <clears throat> as you get older and you look back at those memories, you'll just be like, "Damn, how did I survive? How did I? <laughs> how did I not like?" Died during this time period. It was so reckless. Yeah, I've mellowed out in the last few years. But when when you're younger, you can take that stuff, and it just seems like the more the more things that happen, the more it can really shape who you are. I kept hoping that Chase was going to kind of get to that period where it would be like, okay, I've been drinking now, and I'm binge drinking, and I'm not. And I've lost jobs, and I I'm going to get my shit together and and it just couldn't happen for him. So to know that people that I still like Bevan and you, um, I'm just happy to know that, and Andrew, I'm happy to know that you guys are doing well. Really yeah, happy. I mean, he, he, yeah, it it's sucks that he doesn't get a chance to. And that's... I don't know. Just the stakes just got so high so quickly. It seemed like during those those two years uh, for things that were happening in my life. It, yeah. Yeah. But you, at least you're surviving, even if it's one step at a time. And you know, if these podcasts help you, and it's something you can look back on and listen to, and say, ah, oh, yeah, I I felt like that too. And that's probably another reason why you do them. Yeah, it's almost uh, compulsive. 
it's um it's not a bad thing it's something new for me i'd i never thought of it <laughs> yeah i really i i kind of just felt almost like an injustice when i started this i just felt like i needed to like almost just tell on all the bad things that were happening to yeah. try and like so like well he's somebody's put this out into the world should we call the authorities or right right but you know you nobody knows how to behave in a situation like that it's not something you experience on a daily basis i i know now that i as a mother miss a lot of signs i just didn't see them chase was a grown man i didn't get to talk to him all the time, but I didn't realize that he was stuck in that cycle. And, you know, when you get in something like that, it you go nowhere. You know, like after Chase died, I, I told you my whole family kind of fell apart. And for two years, I couldn't move. I couldn't get forward. I, I just felt like I was on one of those stationary bicycles, just going as hard as I could. Mm -hmm. And then I decided one day that, you know, I didn't die. And I am so sorry that Chase died, but I've got to move forward. And I started doing that. And every day it got a little bit better. And you don't go back because you, you want to go back. You want to go back and see what, what could you have done, what, what, what. What happened? Where did the breakdown happen? Why didn't I say something? But you can't do that because then you're just staying in the same place. Right. And you're just spinning. And, you know, now I look back at things with Chase and their, their memories and they hurt. They still do sting. But I don't blame myself for the things I was blaming myself for. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll go there. Uh, why didn't I get on a plane again and go get him? And why didn't I, you know? And no, nope, stop, because you got to move forward. And you've got to look at it as a, a life lesson. I, I'm never going to let that happen to anybody I love again or know if I see those kind of signs. But then again, Cameron, what can you do? You can only do so much. Yeah. Right? And I wasn't there or I didn't know about your demons. But someone must have helped you come out of that hole, whether it was your girlfriend or your family or friends. And you were able to stay out of it. Yeah. You're still out of it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've thought a lot about it. I I never really blamed myself for the stuff because I really felt like I did everything I could in the... You absolutely did. You went Ten years that I knew him. You were a very, very good friend. You're a good person. Obviously, wow. you, you know, you care about people. It definitely, after... Those couple years, yeah, it, it wasn't, uh, it changed. I, I got nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. I, you know, when I, I think about, well, what would be different now if Chase was alive? Probably nothing. And that's what's sad. That's what, I, you know, I think it was really weird because right before Chase died, I went to two funerals for people under, younger than him. And I remember when I was at the second funeral, I was like, God, are you preparing me for something? Because, you know, two random deaths. And it wasn't a month later that Chase died. And I, in my mind, kind of was mentally prepared for that. But you're never really prepared for that. But I, I thought it was a possibility that I could get that phone call. Wow. And, and it is um, just something you can never forget. 
probably you felt something very similar when you found out your father attempted suicide. I mean, that is, that's the end. You know, there's no asking questions after that. If, if that happens, if that's the, the end result, that's, that's it. Yeah, there was a week in the ICU where it could have gone either way. It was all, yeah. all this power of attorney stuff. and Right. I, and I was the oh only person God. there. The, fam- the rest of the family didn't get there for three or four days. Wow. That was rough. Yeah. That was rough. Mm. And so it seems like you've had a friend, had your dad. Yeah. Or- yeah, I mean he's be- he's better now. When when he recovered, when he survived, um, he was not okay. He was really angry. Um, he would snap, and I had to move out because um, I was staying with him occasionally. And that's when I had to start. I mean, I was homeless in San Francisco, living in a van for probably four months. Oh wow! Yeah, parked outside of my friend's house. So that was, and then, yeah, and then the chase thing right after that, it was just. Oh, that was right after that. I think also that's kind of part of the reason why Chase thought it was, I mean, he he saw me being homeless. And then it was kind of like, well, I'll just be homeless for a while. I I kind of think there was like a justification there where he thought that he could just be sleeping in in the park or in the motels that, that Ty had paid for him. That's crazy. I didn't know that. But I mean, that was coming from, I mean, I had paid, I rented a studio apartment that was, I mean, I was, I was doing well before that. So it was a big contrast. It's not like I'd ever thought that I would be in that position. That's, that's rough. I wonder too, like when all this kind of stuff was happening, I couldn't find a reason for it. It just seemed like the dice had been rolled and they just kept coming up bad. There was just no re like people can lose their lives for no reason. And there's nothing behind it except just the forces of the world. I think you begin to realize kind of how fragile it really is. I had a friend that went horseback riding and was talking to his wife, was having a good time, stepped off the horse and died from an aneurysm just like that. How how does that, why is that, there's no justification, there's no closure, it just happened. And you realize... And, you know, Chase, I would get so angry with him because there was no reason. I I never understood why, Chase, how alcohol could be so powerful and take over his life because he had a good life. He didn't want for a damn thing. He had a good life. So alcohol became something that he needed to get him through the day. I have no idea and became his demon. Yeah, it it always seemed out of character for me. Um, When we were living together, it ended with pretty much me kicking him out. And it always seemed out of character to me for him when he was binging. And I, I never got it. I never, I just didn't, I didn't, I never understood. Like what? It didn't I, I seem don't know. like. He once told me he liked that feeling between being conscious and not conscious. That it was a great place to be, and I never understood that. I I, I still don't understand that. Why would you want to be that that wasted or that close to passing out? I, I don't understand. I, don't, I do I not don't understand either. alcoholism that much either. 
maybe it's psychological, maybe it's it's uh, g- genetic, or I I, I don't yeah, know. I but mean, I, it's it just could be. I, I I do understand that his dad drinks a lot more than he ever did when I knew him, and has issues with that. So maybe that could be, and. You know, there are probably other things going on in Chase's life that he just didn't share. And that's unfortunate. But I just choose anymore. I can't do anything about any of that. I can think about it all day long. And I did and I have. And I realize I can't change anything. And it's a perspective thing. I am looking at it from the mom's perspective. You're going to look at it from a friend's perspective. My girls look at it from a sibling's perspective. And they're all different. But yeah, I I think I, I have gotten to the point where I have accepted it. And now I'm adjusting. And it looks different. And it's going to continue to look different. I'm... My husband and I are selling our home and moving to Florida. And, you know, I guess people just constantly evolve. Life goes on. That's yeah. good. That's good that, you know, making a change. I'd, like you said, some people, the trauma family thing, it can really make things worse or make things better. But, I had another friend whose whose brother died uh, when we were teenagers, and they had to move. They had to move, uh, and I think it did them did them well. Well, it's just um, here's what I can say. I'm never going to forget it. You can't forget it, but I don't want to live it all the time either, and. I've got all those wonderful memories. That's what I hang on to now. I've got a lot of cool pictures. And I used to feel like I needed to get Chase's story out. He he was, you know, so young and he died and he he had all these aspirations. And, you know, when we were up there on that hill and, and people were telling me about him and I thought, you know, you're just, here you were in this ginormous city. And all of these people felt drawn to come up here to this hill to share your memory. And that's, that's powerful. You know, I mean, they didn't have to do that. And, but that's, that's what effect Chase had on them. And sometimes you don't even know a person till they die. I realize that as well. And I didn't know my son as much as an adult as I did as my kid and I'm sad that I didn't but he was a mama's boy I will tell you that (laughs) (laughs) and it has been extremely extremely sad but I feel him around me and I feel like it's a good thing and I I feel like I get to keep him this way you know like Bevan She's going to grow up and find somebody or find something and do her own thing. And she's going to get to do that. And that memory of change will just fade as the years go by. Yeah. But they won't for me. They'll always be right there. And, you know, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah. More than, uh, than I would have ever anticipated. I feel Chase with me too. Yeah. Um, and that's that's powerful, isn't it? To think that somebody could have made an impression, good or bad. When Chase was good, he was very, very good. <laughs> but then, you know, he could be horrid. So I sure do miss him. And the way he explained himself, but when meant to be. Yeah. Well, but uh, I'm glad you asked me to do this. It was yeah. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. You know, a lot of people don't. I get. I get no's. Yeah. 
But I did chase some of uh, Chase's ashes are in the fountain across from Grace Cathedral in Knob Hill. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that night you that That's night you gave them to me. <clears throat> yeah, I put I put some in there because uh, yeah, that's where we met, and then we also had some some crazy nights with girls swimming in that fountain, and a lot of weird <laughs> a lot of weird stories. Uh, those, those stories are awesome. We'll yeah. hang on to those forever. Yeah, he used to get hit on uh, by. The, <laughs> I remember there was an older lady who tried to take him back to the Mark Hopkins. A cougar. <laughs> oh, Chase, Chase. I remember when he was in um, Amsterdam, I had said, now look, no hookers, okay? I don't want to hear tales of you and hookers. In the, in the, so he <laughs> and one of the band guys went, and uh, whether they not they were with the hookers, I don't know. But at this time, he just basically sent me this little picture and said, hey, mom, you know, I'm here having conversation with this young lady. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks, honey. But, um, <laughs> you know, he thought that kind of stuff was funny. And yeah, I, I, I do miss all of the, hey, mom, did you listen to that song I, I told you to listen to? That <laughs> Chase, I have not listened to it. Mom, God, you need to listen to it. When I'm going to get a phone and you listen to it, and then we're, I'm going to talk to you about it. I'm like, okay. And you know, I'd listen to it. He's like, what do you think? I'm like, you know, it it was okay. I didn't, you didn't like it. You didn't think it sounded like, <laughs> you know, so I miss that kind of argumentative part of him sometimes. And, um, it, but, but that same side was also extremely frustrating as he was growing up. Yeah. But. He, I can't imagine. Boy, he had a point. He wanted to drive it home. But he had a really good heart, too. Miss that. There was a... Um, it's kind of floating back to me. The, the Homer Simpson tattoo was pretty great. He was the only... <laughs> <laughs> he was the only guy in the Simpsons cult that one of the few people in the Simpsons cult that I knew. Oh my gosh, he had every stinking um, videotape. I have like I had boxes and boxes. Yeah, we had I him at our at our apartment when we were there. Did you? Okay, well, I it's just like there were so <laughs> many DVDs. things, and I, because we just literally packed up his entire. Unit here he was homeless. He had a freaking unit that he kept all his shit in, and so we brought all that back. And I've slowly gone through it, you know. And that's what I was telling you the other night that I can see the progression of alcoholism through his artwork because the characters weren't as defined. He was angry. A lot of things were coming right out of the top of everything's head and. A lot of weird shit. Oh yeah, I was so angry. I remember I was so angry with him when he got arrested after uh, in Knob Hill. I had just like completely written him off. I forgot that. I think we we were like uh, a couple of fighting siblings, or like we were we wanted we were we had a fight at that point. That's weird. Oh, That's yeah. probably around the time, too, that you were calling me after that happened. So here, you know, you're hating the guy, and then you feel like I better at least let his mom know. <laughs> oh, then there was also, we, I remember when we were living in that apartment on, on 19th and Mission, he was uh, yeah. always uh, eating sunflower seeds. Do you remember this? <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> like I kept telling him, dude, you're not supposed to eat the shells. It says right here on the bag, and he kept doing it. And uh-huh. then my, I was at at a town or something, and and my, <laughs> I called my mom to rescue. I remember him telling she, me that she had to take him to San Francisco General because he had eaten oh all the shells. Oh my God, Chase! That's a. I mean, that's. That's embarrassing, but it's hilarious. Yes, he, but he was like that as a kid, and I couldn't tell him anything. Nothing. <laughs> he probably hated yeah. me telling that story. 
because he described <laughs> to me what the he described to me the procedure that that uh, they had to do, and it was not. I'm sure it was very painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! But did it keep him from eating them? I didn't see it anymore. He always ate a lot of sweets and salty stuff, but I didn't. Uh, he liked salty and he liked real sour stuff too. Yeah. And um, yeah. There was also this song. I remember he he had met some random street guy, and he the guy gave him a, a CDR of um, his music, and I guess this guy was had in the 80s some pretty big music connections and his songs were like professional songs and he had some connection with Prince or something but there was one song on his CD and Chase learned it and um, I remember the song but I can't remember all the lyrics or the chords and it was this really really good song and then Chase told the guy like you know weeks later that oh I learned your song and the guy was furious you know, because he didn't want anyone. You know, this was like the only thing he had left in the world was was the, these were this EP. And I don't. I wish I had a copy of that song because it was so good. Um, I, I, I could I actually have it, and not even know it. You've got so much stuff here. Yeah, it's good. The guy was called Another Derek. It was his artist name, and the song was. Something called like some people go crazy, but we would, yeah, we would play yeah. that song, and it was so good. It it would be worth covering now. Um, although I don't think if Derek's still around, he would like that. <laughs> but it was a, I don't think he probably would. Yeah, it's this weird thing because I'd see Chase, you know, after a year of not having talked to him, or and it would always come up. That one song would always come up. Really. Hmm. I don't know. I know he um he one time told me like a password that he had to get into some of that stuff and I can't even remember what it was, so I could never I can't get into some of his stuff. <clears throat> I did get his SoundCloud stuff, but you know, I don't know a lot about that stuff, so it, it doesn't really mean a lot to me and then what happens is down the road a couple of years, I catch on. I'm like, oh, that's what they meant when they. <laughs> so, you know, just my generation catching up with me. Yeah. But, a lot of it's. Yeah, I remember he had a. Uh, yeah, like yeah, a little my, digital recorder. He did. I got stuff that too with a lot of. A lot of the names of a lot of his songs and a lot of his recordings, and we've kept or keeping a lot of that. But um, I told you, this guy, he had a lot of music. Yeah. So. But, well, you know, before he passed away, we spent uh, two or three weeks, you know, in the woods up in Mendocino. Yes, you did. And that was it. Was nice to have that. It was. He, he he started drinking again back up there, though, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yep. Yeah, and that's right when he gotten back from rehab. Literally, we sent him back, and he was heading up there. I thought it, you know, I was like, well, that might be a good thing because he's out of. He wasn't a real big pot smoker. He's out of the way of you know, mainstream people and kind of alone in the woods, so to speak. And then he told me he fell off the wagon up there. I remember once, one night, he got drunk. Yeah, you're you're pretty pretty deep in the woods. It's it's. I think you go you go to the outside world once a week. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know it was just a bummer that he went and he and he was weakened and got it. But you know, I guess there's no, you know, it's fate. You are given a hand when you're born, and you think you're going to play it a certain way and you're going to cheat somehow. But in the end, it it is what it is, and 
I I wonder about Chase. I'm like, Chase, were you awake when you when you died? Were you passed out and don't even know? Um, well, you know, a lot of weird things kind of came into my mind after Chase died, because when I was talking to him the day before he died, he was going in and out of consciousness, and he would. Tell me he loved it right when he was going to sleep and right when he was waking up. Well, that's exactly what he told me, that euphoric feeling that he felt with alcohol when he would be so drunk, he passed out. And then he's coming back to in that state right there, which I can't imagine that he liked. And he liked it. So. Yeah, he, he, um. His phone was being weird. I still have some of his voice messages from that month on yeah. my on my phone, but one of the one of the more difficult things was that he had sent me a Facebook message at I just pulled it up at 12:06 p.m. on on June 11th. And I think that was probably the last I know you and Erica both had, because she felt like she was one of the last people he talked to as well. And it was, she was having a difficult time hearing him. And I guess she said her last words were something like, Chase, I can't do this anymore. And then of course he died that day. And so she deals with her own demons with that as well. And yeah. I don't think Chase took it as my sister doesn't want to talk to me anymore. I'm sure he knew it was pixelated and or whatever. It just sounded all digitalized and it was hard to understand him. Yeah. But, but yeah, he's, he, he's, he is, yeah, he is. Yeah, he sent me the, the me- a message that said that he was detoxing. Um, really, really badly. And in, you know, the, I was park. told later that that was the worst thing he could do. It was to try to detox on his own. And because your body's in such shock. And I think the reason that was happening, Cameron, is because he literally could not see to go anywhere to get anything. I, I think in the end, Chase knew what was happening to him. You know, um, he he was in denial. He was telling me, I'm not going to die. Mom, I'm not going to die. And I don't want to die. I'm not going to die. And he flipped and died. Yeah. Yeah, we I had that talk with him too. That's crazy. And so, you know, we all, we all tried. And he knew it. And... You know, I wish, I wish, I wish he could just come and tell me in my sleep, hey, mom, I did hear you or whatever. But instead, my last memory is him getting out of my car, heading to the airport. And he turned back to look at me. We just stared at each other. And I had a feeling that was going to be my last time seeing Chase. Wow. And it was. And so, you know, my memories of him are are good memories. Now they're they're very special. And the little boy Chase that found that little sand dollar. I felt like he let me know that he's whole again. And I'm good with that. And I'm moving to that very same place that I threw those ashes out. And so I'll feel very close to him when I'm there. Yeah. And we were always going to travel, he and I. We were always headed to New England. (laughs) Always. Really? Yeah. And I wish we could have. Like I said yesterday, I, it's, it's out of character for me, but uh, but I'd really feel like Chase is still with, with me and 
and with you too. So yeah, absolutely I, is. I don't feel, uh, yeah, I, I really feel like some part of him is still, is still around. Um, and he's and he's happy for that because <laughs> he liked to you know he liked the attention kind of to be on him at times and yeah when he was in his good place he was so much fun but you know this, that dark place would get him every time and so not anymore and now it's just good feelings and and good memories and those tears are memories. Now, they're not, <clears throat> it's not all pain anymore. <laughs> I think that ha that lasted probably over a year and a half. And I can still go there in a minute, but I don't let myself. Because it's not healthy. So, death is, it's so oppressive to me. And yeah. I, I realize it's a part of life and I'm trying to trying to figure it out my own self. Well I'm glad you I do hope um, I do hope that when I when my day comes that he's standing there waiting for me. <laughs> undoubtedly. Absolutely. So I hope. He better be. I think he's here. I think he's here now, and I feel really, like I said, woo woo with this kind of stuff. But I think absolutely, you know, yeah. he has been around my house, and and I'm, you know, people will say things like, "Oh, cardinals! If you see a cardinal, you know, I live in Cardinal Nation, first of all, but um, if you see a like cardinal." You, you know that it's a memory of, well, I never really paid that much attention. But since the day before, on the 10th, this week, the day before his death, I, I, I told you, I, I think I've lost a lot of his journals. And I just had a horrible meltdown. My girlfriend came over, David was at work. And this cardinal was going crazy. I we have this ginormous porch that's um, all uh, screened in, and and it's like an aviary out here. And this cardinal would not stop. It kept climbing on the top of the tree, and then he'd get on one of the um, you know one of the railings. And then he was on the top of another tree, and then he was right outside, right down below. And I feel like maybe. You know, maybe he was. Maybe he was like saying, "Mom, it's all right. It's it, there. I didn't want you to have him." <laughs> so, yeah, he was like that as well. You know, he was a journaler from the time he was a young boy. He journaled, and I always wanted to get my hands on him. I couldn't, of course. And so when he um, when he died, and I got them all, I found this one. I was looking for his early journal writings, like when he was a young boy. And I came across this journal that said he had destroyed all of those journals, that now this was a new chapter in his life. Huh. So, you know, I was never meant to have him. And I do have some really good artwork of his still. I, I came across it yesterday. And um, I'm hopeful that I'm hope, hoping that I will come across that other stuff. But, you know, you can't hold on to that kind of stuff either. I think about people who lose everything in a fire or lose everything in a flood. Yeah. Every memory. And it's a thing. It is a thing. And, you know, we don't need things. So... Yeah, I have a regret like that where I had what I thought and I'm not sure now was the only copy of my grandma's uh, unpublished memoir in my apartment in San Francisco. And when I was forced out of there by my family and forced to go to rehab, I lost lost it and I, I, I gave away all my books and 
I think I, I threw it in a bin at, um, at the used bookstore. And I keep asking my dad, is there another copy? But he doesn't want to think about it. And uh, that just kills me. Just so much regret from that time because I gave away so much stuff and threw away so much stuff thinking that, feeling so bad about myself really at that time. And boy, was that not the right thing to do. It's far enough away now. Like, I mean, I even went back to that bookstore three years later and they still had one of my books uh, and I oh bought it gosh. back. I, I bought it back. And the lady at the register thought I was in, insane because it was, it was literally my, my old, my book that I'd sold there three years earlier. But uh, hmm. the, the memoir, I don't know where it is, you know, and that, it's That's still unresolved. Good. Right. And I don't know if there's another <clears throat> copy. You know, it may it may resolve itself sometime and it may not. So you can't do anything about it. So you just have to accept it and then hope. Just like I'm hoping that I'm gonna open up one of my containers and I'm gonna see all those journals. Because my girlfriend, everything I donated so far, I've donated to Goodwill. And my girlfriend called Goodwill that day and said, if someone had made a mistake and a container full of like personal items and journals and things like that, would they have set it aside? And the lady said, no, we're instructed to just throw it all away. Throw it all away. And so, you know, I was a mess on that day, and you called that night, last night, right? The night before, I don't even know what day it is. Yesterday, but, um, well, yeah. So, or no, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two days ago. Two days ago, and so you know, I um. I was a mess, like I said, and that bird just kept flying around and flying around. And and there's not a damn thing I can do. If they're gone, they're gone. But I do, luckily, have a few others, smaller ones. And so I, I'll, I'll have those. Yeah, I, I'm more careful but now I that sure that happened. It hurts. I know it does. And just like you said, that's the only copy it hurts even more. But it is a thing. It is a thing. And hopefully you have some great memories. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a sign that I should write a memoir later in life Maybe. or something. If it never turns Maybe up. It is. And yeah, maybe it is. Cameron. Uh, are you at home or are you at your studio or I'm at my, my studio. It's one of the bedrooms in, in our apartment. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really hot here. <laughs> Is it real hot? Oh, well, let's say you're in Los Angeles. So yeah. And you guys have been getting a bunch of rain, haven't you? Yeah. A couple last month. Uh, yeah. A couple months ago, Which it was crazy. just, when it rains here, it rains torrential. I know. And then in, later in the summer, the wind, the Santa Ana winds come and blow all the plants over. <sighs> yeah, the Santa Ana wind. Well, I don't know if I have anything more to say now, but I, I, I do hope that you know you get all the things that you'd like to have accomplished in your life but don't beat yourself up if you if you fall short of it and you're, you're a good friend and such a such a warm person Cameron well, I, I'm thanks, so Liz. glad that Chase got to know you and that I got to know you me too I'm, I'm glad you know that I got to know you too and and Chase obviously yeah 
And, um, you know, Chase, I had a lot of demons. And I wish that, I think that when I got all of his journals, I thought I would discover it. You know, like I would open one up and see what those demons were. Find the answer. And that it, they aren't in there, and his his works and his and his paintings reflect the times, of course. But um, when he was in jail, um, he he became a jail artist, and he would make the most disgusting things. He said because it got him cigarettes, and, <laughs> and so when he would write letters, he would decorate the envelopes like you wouldn't believe, and. You know, so his artwork is all over these envelopes and inside the letters. And he, his creative juices started flowing, unfortunately, when he was incarcerated. And I just wish it would have kept on. I really do. Yeah, I remember uh, when he got out, he was, he had a song or some, some like, performance or something that he had come up with that he was telling me about. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. But thank you for doing this. I hope it's not intrusive or anything. It sounds like you're you're okay. You get it. Yeah. I get it. And um I think it's important to to have some respect for this issue I remember that um, Chase's last words on on his uh, the San Francisco wait or whatever um, no pressure and that is how he wanted to live his life with no pressures no I always thought no motivation but again it was a different time period. But I sure wish I could have gotten to know Chase as an adult more than just the mom. Because the letters that I have gotten and received and cards and things that were sent to him, he had a lot of good friends. He had a lot of girls that would send him pictures in different states of undress. I think that's quite interesting. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. To be a guy. <laughs> but, I, uh, um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've thrown a lot of those. I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know. Yes, yeah, she's cute and she's perky, <laughs> but okay. Or, yeah. yeah. So he was it's always, so yeah, he, I mean, he was always the best looking guy in the, in the group. And <laughs> it's true. I remember he told me, he told me one of our other friends, this, Brian probably won't appreciate me saying this, but he told me that that Brian said to him one time, "If I were gay, I would date you or something like that. Or I would have sex with you." <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, what does that oh, mean? Oh gosh, that's funny. Yeah, and you know the sad thing is, like, some horrible shit went down when when he was really in the end. You know, when the bad stuff was really happening there, and even though, like, with what he did with his friends. My grandmother's mandolin or whatever it was that Chase beat to death. They showed up up there because she said, because we love Chase. And he had a demon and it was unfortunate. And she, they still have Philly to my knowledge. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure by now that couple, I would think, has probably moved on from that apartment. But they were a cute couple. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good place. It was, it was. good location, and I know Bevan moved in there. I don't know if she's still in there, but she did move in in there for a while. I uh, was texting with her on a Wednesday, and she said she was pretty upset and um, yeah, didn't seem was. like she was in a good place. She but posted still- something on his, you know, she posted something about him. And, yeah. But she's she, still in San Francisco. He was a sweetheart, that's for sure. Lots of pictures of her. 
And it's interesting because, of course, I connected with her mother on Facebook. Her mother lives in New Jersey. And so, you know, just all the things that are going on with her mom. And it's just been it's funny how life is. Yeah, I'd like to catch up with her more. I, yeah. Like you said, I, I, I kind of worry. I, I, I worry too. that she's I'd love right. to know what's going on. Sometimes I see pictures of her and it looks like she's in a dark place. And so I hope she's not. So beautiful. I'd hate that. And so young. But again, alcohol is a demon. You know, I don't even think it's a drug. I think it's it's a freaking demon. And if you enjoy it too much... It's just like the serpent, man. It'll get you every time. And I've watched Bevan since Chase died. I've seen pictures of her and different. And there are times she's totally trashed. And so I'd hate to think that that demon will get her too. Really would hate that. But you know, I you can't control other people. Yeah. But it is a demon. From the outside, San Francisco is a it's a drinking town. I mean, that's where I learned how to yeah. how to drink, and you know, you kind of have to to live in a rat race like that. I mean, it is. I don't think until you, unless you're away from it, and then you go back to it. And I'm sure LA is the same thing, and all of those big cities. There is this constant hum. There's this constant grind that you can't escape and then you go away from it and you go to the country or whatever and for a while it's like really uncomfortable because you can't settle down because you're missing something and it's that damn grind that you, <laughs> that you hear when you're in the city yeah and I still... it takes its toll on you physically because your body is always you know we're trained while we're little to be aware of our environment and then the state that the world is in right now, you're always in that flux, whether you know it or not, and your body reacts to it. And I think after a while, it can wear you out. So yeah, I'm sure alcohol is great. And But in San Francisco, isn't pot legalized now or is it just um, medicinal still? No, it's, it's, it's state, statewide legal, but San Francisco, is, it's been... For a while, Ostensibly right? legal for 10, 10, 15 years or longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's... Yeah, I, 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 I was just... Yeah, San Francisco really made me who I was. I still... When I hear a siren, it makes me calm. And if it's too quiet, I, I, I get nervous. <laughs> Because that was the environment that you kind of sort of learned to be normalized in. Yeah. And, and then when you were away or you are away, it takes a while to get that rhythm back. Or um, I feel it when I go to the ocean, it's almost like a drug. And it takes a while for me to get used to it again. And then I get used to it and then I have to leave. And then when I get home, it takes me a while to get back into. And in that sense, it's almost like a a roar of the ocean, you know, because I'm always usually by the ocean. So, um, yeah. And in the Midwest, it's us all laid back on the highway. <laughs> yeah. Country and highway. And that's it. And so it's very laid back here. So anyway... I guess I should go and visit with my husband. We yeah. were going to watch some kind of crazy movie um, called The Punisher. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, we like to watch kind of violent movies. I don't know why. What's up with that? We do. <laughs> and sci-fi. Sci-fi and... And, you know, Chase would give me all these movies to watch. Mom, you need to watch this. You need to watch that. I had a checklist of them. And so sometimes we'd watch them. And he, his idea of a great movie is totally different than my idea yeah. of a great movie. But he was a movie fanatic from the time he was a little boy. And, um, yeah, which, yeah. you know, worked out perfect for him. 
Yeah, we did, we had good, the same tastes in stuff in movies and yeah, you know. That's kind of funny. The, uh, yeah, there's a really good San Francisco movie that just came out called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. And I thought it, it really, we went to see it the other night, the night it was released. Yeah. And it really took me back. I feel like they really showed the city and the people the right way, which is hard to do. The Last Black Man in San Francisco. I'll yeah, check it's that worth out. watching. Right. It's, it's so bittersweet thinking about moving away from there and and yeah. I miss it but I know that even if I went back it wouldn't it's wouldn't not be ever going to be the same as it was yeah and it can't be that's kind of like with everything though you know like you've had a really good friend and you guys were such good friends and then you other than those kind of friends that like that with Chase that you bonded with so well but sometimes you can't get back to it it just changes and it's okay. I think it's just part of, again, part of that process of, of living. Yeah. So. Well, I wish uh, you and David the best and, uh, and mm -hmm. with your move. I hope that goes smoothly. Thanks. And I hope you'll call me again next year. <laughs> it was hard. For, I, I, my girlfriend pushed me. I, I almost didn't. And then she said, no, you, got, you have to. So I did. I'm glad you said that. Tell her, me thank too. You. Me too. I think it was good for both of us. Well, thanks so much, Liz. You're welcome. I really good wish night. you guys the best. <laughs> thank you. And I wish you guys the best too. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Bye. You've been listening to the Cameron Adair podcast made by me, Cameron Adair. Just want to say thank you to Liz. You know where to find this show. Thanks for listening.